I thank the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Studies in partnership with the Commonwealth for inviting me to share some reflections on the work of Henry Charles, new development scholar, practitioner, and leader. The Caribbean and Commonwealth gained a wealth of knowledge and socio-political resources through his thought and political leadership. Dr. Charles would be remembered for his near evangelical mission against youth deficit approaches in development and his commitment to the poor and those made vulnerable by inequalities. I miss him, I miss him dearly. He was a political father to me as he was the dozens of youth throughout the region. Today, I will discuss his concept of ways on, earth, on youth political agency and agenda setting. As part of Henry Charles' creative application of scholarship, he extended radical theoretical concepts to the Caribbean context. In his PhD dissertation, he began to explore the everyday social relation of ways on earth as a form of popular youth engagement. He defined it as a St. Lucian Quayle concept that connotates profound reasoning, characterized by sharing perspectives, even the inconveniences of relationships, processes, systems, or phenomena. In personal correspondence, Henry Giles explained that Wiesner informed his posture and politics of engaging young people, especially those who were critical of the social, political, and economic order of the day. He saw it as a space to mediate conflict among youth where they were located while understanding the contradictions of the society through the discourses. The praxis or this praxis has epistemic and methodological Caribbean and Latin American roots in the Brazilian educator, Paulo Freire's critical pedagogy and critical consciousness, Guyana's Walter Rodney Grounding's and the Rastafari concept of reasonings for equitable, just, and grounded approaches to collective understanding and knowledge creation. Ways on Earth formed the base of Charles' youth development policy formulation, not consultations. For him, consultations were processes that were hierarchical, overly technocratic, and too easily tempted to fall into the deficit approach to youth work and engagement. While Charles did not live to outline his methodology technically, a young generation of scholars served to benefit by exploring the scholarly and political utility of this approach to theorizing and youth policy development. Through Ways on Earth, he firmly believed that youth as individuals indiv independently or collectively can apply critical reasoning abilities to describe their experiences, develop a profound understanding about their concrete reality and devise, implement, and evaluate solutions to their problems. This approach forces us to reflect on the following questions. How are youth communicating their issues and perspectives on youth policy? What are youth engaging in? Where are youth, sorry, engaging in critical dialogue on the society and their reality? What constitutes a youth leader? And what models of youth leadership across diverse spaces in the youth population can we benefit from? I would like to add that a general analysis which strengthened this framework, feminist scholarship on agenda setting, consider the gender dimensions of leadership the mainstreaming of women's and girls' issues on the development agenda, such as combating gender-based violence, gender disparities in the economy and menstrual health and hygiene. These are not just gender issues. These are development issues. Gender issues are development issues. Further, the politics of youth development and agenda setting must meaningfully incorporate the emotional labor and experiences of leaders. Wizone as a methodological approach which requires to be properly designed into the youth development planning process, it must be adequately resourced and given the adequate time and flexibility to facilitate um, the youth development process. It would give teeth to the Commonwealth asset-based empowerment, rights-based approach in youth mainstreaming. Similarly, the Declaration of Paramaribo on the Future of Youth in the Caribbean Community by 2020, and that was made by the CARICOM Heads of Government, it affirmed the belief that a unique perspective, creative energy, um, the other assets which young people possess are essential elements of social innovation and development. The truth of the matter is that the Caribbean youthscape has fallen woefully short of living up to its promises and affirmations in regional and national development. Without reservation, Henry Charles called out the betrayal of youth from the weak, hard and fast consultations with youth, selective biases for the appointment of youth ambassadors to represent youth, in the national community and the lack of support for youth leaders after they were formalized, such as their lack of funding 
for international travel for key policy meetings. And the consistent exclusions of youth who were made vulnerable in his society and considered out of reach. In short, he saw the puppy show that passed for youth development at all levels among state and non-state actors in government development spaces and in the youth movement. In conclusion, Henry Charles Wazoner was our effort to foreground his deep political conviction that youth are the masters of their destiny. To remix the Haitian author and political activist Jacques Rumen, his dialogue in Gouverneur de la Rose, L'homme et le boulanger de sa vie, we say, les jeunes sont les boulangers de la vie. The youth are the bakers of their lives. Thank you, good sir, comrade, political father, and believer in the capacity and cause of you. Plenty love.